Alright, so let's start by going over what comes inside of the Mata Hobby Kits Crochet Hippo Kit. Alright, so the first thing that you should find inside of your kit box is the QR code to get to the free video course, but I'm assuming you've probably already figured this one out since this is the video course. Next we have our skeins of yarn, the super soft fluffy purple for our hippo. Next we have our notions bags, it's going to include a crochet hook, our tapestry needles, and our stitch markers. Then we also have our bag with the safety eyes and the very small amount of white yarn that we're going to use. Next up is a part of the accessory kit. These are the sunglasses that we're going to be able to use to accessorize our hippo once it's all done. Then we have the written pattern booklet for the hippo. So this video tutorial is going to go through and walk through each of these steps for you, but you have a written copy of the pattern for your reference. Then we have the accessory kit, so let's open this up and take a look at each item inside. Alright, so first we have our hippo's crossbody bag. Then we have the shirt that we can put on afterwards, and it comes with its own little hanger. And then last we have the hat that we're going to be able to put on our hippo's head. Last we have our bag of fiber fill stuffing that we're going to use to stuff our plush once it's all said and done. Alright, that's everything, so we are ready to go ahead and get started making our very own hippo. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the head, so we'll go ahead and grab our first skein of purple yarn and get started with the center of it here. And then we'll also need to get our crochet hook out of our notions bag, and then grab a stitch marker. There are a lot of options to choose from. But I personally prefer the kind that can snap open and close, so I'll be using this kind. Feel free to try the other ones that are in the bag and see which one suits your crochet needs best. Alright, so we're going to begin by forming a magic loop. So to start one off if you've never made a magic loop before, I like to start mine by forming sort of a finger guns here with my left hand. So I'll take my index and middle finger and kind of pinch them together. And then with my yarn, I'm going to take about five inches or so and then pinch that to the lower digit of my index and middle finger with my thumb. Then I'll take the working yarn, that's the yarn that's attached to my ball of yarn, not the tail here. So I'm going to take my working yarn with my right hand and I'm going to wrap it around the top two digits of my index and middle finger. So if you saw, I had to flip my hand over. Then once I have that wrapped around those top two digits, I'm going to flip my hand back over and cross it on top of what I've already got pinched against my thumb and then pinch that as well. Then we're going to keep wrapping. We'll wrap around the lower digits of our index and middle finger. Flip our hand back over one more time and then pull that working yarn so it's behind our thumb as well. Then once we have all of those wraps, we're going to flip our left hand back over so we can see our fingertips. And then take our crochet hook, slip it underneath that top loop, the one on the closest to our fingertips, and hook the lower loop and pull it so that it goes underneath that top loop. Then once you have that done, you can flip both hands over. So your left and right hand, we'll flip them over and then we're going to bring our hands together so that our fingertips on our right hand touch the back of our left hand. Next, we're going to take our index finger and our thumb on our right hand, our hook hand, and we're going to grab both of those loops, the one on our hook and the one still on our fingers. Hold those together pretty tightly. Once you have those in your right hand pinched, you can gently let go with your thumb on your left hand and then gently slide all of those loops off of your fingers. Then once you've done that, we need to once again make another distinction between the tail, this is not attached to our yarn, and the working yarn, this is attached to our working, our, our uh, skein. We need to tension our working yarn, and I like to make sure to tension it 
so that my tail is out of the way. So I kind of pull my tail to the front and then tension my working yarn by putting it over my index finger and then wrapping the remaining fingers around it here. Then before we let go with our right hand, we also need to pinch where the tail and the loop that we tied together come together. So there's like a little bit of a pretzel twist. I'm gonna pinch that with my left thumb and middle finger, and then I can let go with my right hand. Now that I've let go with my right hand, if I tug with my left index finger, it tightens the loop on my hook. You can also loosen that loop by pulling your hook. It's kind of a good way to practice tensioning your yarn. But to get our magic loop so that it's ready to go and locked in place, we're gonna take our hook and yarn over by putting the yarn over our hook and pull it through that loop that's on our hook. Once you've done that, you can let go with your left hand. That loop is now locked in place and it's not gonna come undone. So before we can begin adding single crochet stitches, we need to do one last thing. We need to untangle the tail and the loop. So that pretzel twist that we grabbed onto with our left hand, we're gonna just grab the tail and pull so it's not inside of our loop anymore. And congrats, you've formed a magic loop, which means we're ready to go ahead and start in on round one. So here and then throughout the rest of our video, you'll probably notice the instructions from our instruction booklet are on the top left of our screen. So round one here is saying that we need to put six single crochet stitches, SC, inside of that magic loop that we've just formed. So to make our first single crochet stitch in our magic loop, we're gonna be working, of course, inside of the loop we've created, but also over that tail that we untangled from the loop. So I use my left hand to sort of hold with my thumb and middle finger that magic loop and the tail together. And then using my right hand with my hook, I'm gonna go under both strands. So inside of the loop and underneath both the loop and that tail. Then I can yarn over and draw what I've yarned over up and then through that loop. And then give it a good tug. We want it to not be too tight. So pull that loop up, and then to finish our single crochet stitch, we'll yarn over one last time, so put our yarn over our hook, pull it through both of the loops left on our hook. And that forms our first single crochet stitch. Two things before we add our next stitch. One, I like to tighten this stitch by grabbing where it hits the magic loop and pulling it to the right a little bit. And then second, in Amiga Rumi projects, we mark the first stitch of each round that we make. So we're gonna wanna mark that stitch that we've just created. So if you look, you can see the stitch forms a little V, the front and the back of it. We're gonna use our stitch marker to go underneath both sides, so both this front and back part. So now we know we have one stitch and that this is the first stitch that we made. All right, so let's continue adding single crochet stitches to this magic loop since we need six, we only have one so far. So just like we did with our first one, we're gonna go in through the magic loop, under both the magic loop itself and the tail, yarn over, draw that loop through and then pull it up a little bit then yarn over and draw through both of those loops. We're gonna continue that until we have six stitches. So I have two, you can see those V's. Until we have six of these inside of our magic loop. So to be sure that you have six stitches, if you look at your piece kind of along the edge, you can see each of those little V's that form the stitch. So our first one's easy to find, it's got a stitch marker in it. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
two, three, four, five, and six. We don't count the one here on our hook. That one's sort of a stitch in progress. So we we'll don't count that towards our stitch count. All right, so we have completed round one and we're ready to do the magic part of our magic loop. So we're gonna take that tail and I like to hold where my last stitch is and pull, which closes off round one and gives us a nice circle to work with. All right, so for round two, we're gonna begin working in the stitches from round one and we need to make an increase. If you look up here, our, our, our row here, it's telling us we need to INC, which is to increase. So first thing, we need to take our stitch marker out so that we can put our first stitch in that same space. So go ahead and take your stitch marker out. And an increase starts with placing a single crochet stitch in that first stitch. So we're gonna go from front to back underneath both sides of that stitch. We'll just push straight through. And then from here, it's exactly like our magic loop single crochet. We'll yarn over, draw through and up, then yarn over and draw through both. Before we finish our increase though, we need to mark that stitch because it's the first one from our, of our round. So to do our increase, all we need to do is put another single crochet stitch in the same place that we put our last. So if you look, you can see the hole that my V is coming out of here. We're gonna go through that same space and make one more single crochet stitch. And if you look, you can see we have two Vs coming out of the same hole from the stitch on the first round. So we're gonna continue increasing. So we'll put another two single crochet stitches in the next stitch and every stitch all the way around. All right, so that wraps up round two for me ready to move on to round three and you'll notice here our round three instructions have some asterisks. What that means in crochet is that we're going to repeat all of the instructions inside of them in the order that they appear over and over until we get to the end of our round. So we'll start just like we did with round two by taking our stitch marker out and our instructions are telling us to put one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. So there's our first stitch, so don't forget to mark that one. Then the last part of our asterisks are telling us to put an increase in our next stitch. So then we're gonna repeat that same sequence of one single crochet in the next stitch, increase in the, same, in the next stitch after, all the way around until we get to the last stitch of our round, which is right next to our stitch marker. All right, so we're ready for round four. So we're gonna start by putting one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. Then we'll increase in the next stitch. And now we have our next set of asterisks that we need to repeat the instructions inside. So we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. That's why there's the number two in front of that. It's not put two in the same place because that's when it increases. So we'll put one single crochet here, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then an increase in the stitch after that. And we're gonna repeat that same sequence until we get to our very last stitch. Because if you look, it says we're gonna end with just one single crochet. All right, I'm at the last stitch, which is just one single crochet. 
and I'm ready to move on to round five. So for round five, we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. Then an increase after that. And just like before, we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, we're ready for round six. We're going to start off by putting one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. Then we'll follow that with an increase in that next stitch. Then we're ready to start our next sequence in our asterisks here by putting one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches. following that with an increase. And we'll repeat that until we get to our last two stitches of the round. All right, here are my last two stitches. I'll put one single crochet in each. And I'm ready for round seven, where we're gonna put one single crochet stitch in the next five stitches. And then following that with an increase. And then we're going to repeat that same sequence all the way around. Alright, so we're ready for round eight, where we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. Then we're going to increase, and then we're ready to start our next asterisks pattern, which is to put one single crochet stitch in the next six stitches, followed by an increase, and then we'll repeat that sequence until we get to our last three stitches of the round. Alright, I'm at my last three stitches. I'm going to put one single crochet in each. Alright, and I'm ready for rounds 9 through 15, where all we need to do is put one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. But before we start, you may have noticed your piece is already starting to kind of make sort of a cup or bowl shape. So I wanted to point out the right side and the wrong side of our work. So the right side is the side that we've been facing this whole time. It's the side that we look at whenever we're working around and around. And the wrong side is the side that has our magic ring, our magic loop tail on, which I'm gonna go ahead and just give a really quick tug to anyway. So this is the side we want facing inside of our piece. We don't want this side to kind of be this direction. So you might have to kind of encourage your piece to curve with the outside on the outside. Just something to keep in mind as we work our way around, especially as we're gonna just be putting one single crochet stitch in every stitch. All right, so I will see you whenever I get a little closer to the end of round 15. All right, so I just wrapped up the end of round 15 and you can see I have quite a bit of work done since last time. So we're going to start in on round 16 and we're going to begin by single crocheting in the first three stitches of the round. And then if you look at the instructions in the top left, you can see we have something called a DEC or decrease. So to do a decrease, it's a lot like an increase, but rather than making two stitches come out of one stitch, we're gonna make it so that there's one stitch that takes up the space of two. So to make a decrease, we're gonna take our hook, go through the next stitch just as if we were single crocheting, yarn over and draw up a loop, and then repeat that exact same thing in the next stitch. So go through the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, 
and then draw through all three to complete a decrease. All right, so if you look the rest of round 16, we have in an asterisk repeat pattern. So we're gonna put one single crochet stitch in the next six stitches. And then decrease. And then we're gonna repeat that pattern until we get to our last three stitches of the round. All right, I'm on my last three stitches of the round. I'm just gonna put one single crochet stitch in each. And I'm ready for round 17, where I'm gonna put one single crochet stitch in the next five stitches. And then decrease and then repeat that same sequence all the way around. All right, so we're ready for round 18, and we're gonna put one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. Then we're gonna decrease. Then we'll start our next asterisk pattern of putting one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches. Followed by a decrease. And we'll repeat that until we get to the last two stitches of the round. All right, here are the last two stitches. I'm just gonna put one single crochet in each. I'm ready for round 19, where we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. Then follow that with a decrease. And then repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, we're ready for round 20, and we're going to start Actually, for round 20, we're just going to put one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. All right, so for round 21, we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. and then an increase in the next stitch, and then repeat that same sequence all the way around. Round 22, we're gonna put one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches. followed by an increase. Then we're gonna repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, so for rounds 23 and 24, all we need to do is put one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. So I will see you back here whenever I get a little closer to the end of round 24. Okay, so I just wrapped up round 24, so moving on to round 25, we're going to start decreasing again. So we're going to put one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches. followed by a decrease, and we'll repeat that all the way around. So for round 26, we're going to start by putting one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches.
followed by a decrease, and then repeat that same sequence all the way around. All right, so before we're ready to move on to round 27, we need to stuff and then add the safety eyes to our hippo's head. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my last stitch long so I have some room to work. And I'm gonna start off by putting some stuffing in the upper part of the head, not too much, just a little bit to get me started. Okay, so we don't wanna to put too much stuffing in the upper part of the head because we still need to put the safety eyes in, but I find it helps hold the piece open while I'm placing the safety eyes. Speaking of safety eyes, we need to go ahead and grab those. We only need two of them, our pack comes with four. And then it also comes with these shiny purple discs that are gonna be the underside of each eye. So take it so the shiny part is facing like we're gonna be pushing it so that it's right underneath the surface of the eye. And you can just push the stem of the eye straight through. And that's gonna get pinched against the hippo's head so that the shiny part will be hidden but still be able to be seen through the front of the eye. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add these to our hippo's head. They're going to go in between rounds 18 and 19, and they'll be about four stitches apart. So let's go ahead and find rounds 18 and 19. So I'm gonna take my eye and use the stem to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So rounds 18 and 19. I'm gonna go ahead and lay my first safety eye on there. And it says they're about four stitches apart, so I'm gonna go ahead and count one, two, three. Here's my fourth stitch. But I wanna double check that the safety eyes are going to be close enough and not too far apart that my glasses from my accessory kit fit. So let me grab the glasses really quickly, and I'm gonna just open up the glasses and see if those eyes are gonna be about where I want them to be. And I actually think I would like my eyes to be a little more centered inside of the glasses. So I'm gonna move this left eye out. Let's try one stitch and see how that looks. Here, I think those are a little more centered on the glasses. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap the plastic backs on. So you can see we're gonna just slip this through and push it onto the stem on the inside until you hear click. All right, so now that the backs are snapped on, I'm gonna add a little more stuffing to the top of the hippo's head. And then we're also gonna add the white detail here on the eyes. So just around the outsides here, we're gonna embroider a couple of just straight lines. So go ahead and grab the strip of white yarn that came with your safety eyes. And we're gonna take one of our tapestry needles and we'll thread that through the eye of our tapestry needle. And we're gonna take that whole length. We're not gonna to have to cut it or anything. Then I like to tie a knot at the end of my length of yarn by grabbing it and pinching it against my needle with my right hand and then wrapping a couple of times counterclockwise and then sliding all of those wraps down over the eye of my needle. I kind of have to twist to get it to go through. And that ties a nice knot at the end of our yarn. Then we're gonna take our tapestry needle and sew it so that it's up underneath. I'm gonna start with the left eye. So about halfway through the left eye and then centered along the bottom. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna just run a around the outside of the eye. And we're gonna sew down. And we can repeat this if we want. You can add two stitches. I find I like to add two stitches to the outside whenever I'm doing this. So I'll run another stitch. 
and pull really tightly so the corner of the eye sort of catches that yarn and keeps it from pulling loose. Then we're going to repeat that on the other side. So we'll just take that tapestry needle and go underneath the bottom of the right eye. And if any of your fluff comes through, if you reach inside your piece and pull, you can pull the fluff back inside as well. Alright, let's do that again here on this side. that little white detail adds a little bit of cuteness to the outside of the eye. So once you've got the little white added and it's how you want it to look, we're going to go ahead and tie a knot. So I'm going to flip the head a little bit inside out and then tie a surface knot by looping my white over the inside surface of my work. I'm going to grab just a little bit of the purple fabric of the head and then sew up through that loop that I've made and just pull and that ties a knot. Then we can unthread our tapestry needle and I'm just going to put the rest of the string inside of the hippo's head. Don't even need to cut it, it'll act as stuffing as we continue working around. Alright, so we're ready to go ahead and start in on round 27. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hook back inside of the loop that we drew up long. And for round 27, we'll start off by placing one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. And then after we've done those two single crochet, we're going to decrease. And then repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, so we're ready for round 28. We'll put one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. Then follow that with a decrease. And then repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, so before we do round 29, which is the last round of the hippo's head, we need to stuff the snout. So let's go ahead and pull our last stitch up kind of long, and then grab a little more stuffing and stuff the nose. So when you stuff the nose, I like to also sort of stretch the nose this direction, opposite ways of the eyes, to sort of make it a little flatter. I find it looks a little cuter when it's stretched this way. Alright, so I have the nose stuffed and I'm ready to go ahead and do my last round, which is round 29. So we're going to take our hook and insert it back into that loop we drew up long and then pull it down so we're ready to work. All we need to do for round 29 is decrease in every stitch all the way around. Alright, so now that I have wrapped up round 29, I'm ready to fasten off. So to do that, I'm going to take my stitch marker out, and then I'm going to slip stitch to the stitch that that marker was just in. So to slip stitch, we're going to work just like a regular stitch through front to back, underneath both sides of our stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. But then rather than yarning over and drawing through both, we're just going to keep pulling that loop through to slip stitch. Now we can cut ourselves a little bit of a tail, maybe six inches or so, and we'll pull that last slip stitch all the way through, and then pull again to tighten it into a little bit of a knot. And then we're ready to weave in our tail. So to do that, we'll take it and we'll thread it through the tapestry needle. And then we're going to sew through each of the six remaining stitches on the front of the hippo's head. So we'll just take our needle 
and go through each of those stitches. Once we've done that, we can gently pull to close that last round up. And we'll tie a surface knot just like we did with the white detail on the eyes by looping the yarn over the surface of our work, sewing down into a little bit of the fabric of the head and up through that loop. And then we're gonna pull until it ties a knot. And then we can weave this tail in by sending it directly into the head of the hippo and then just out and up through a random spot. I'm going to send mine through one more time just to make sure it's really woven in. And then give that tail a snip. And that wraps up our hippo's head. So let's move on to the next part of our pattern. So next we need to make the nostrils for our hippo. So to do that, we need to start off by tying a slip knot. So to tie a slip knot, it's actually very similar to how we tie our magic loop. We'll start off with a bit of the finger guns. We'll pinch the lower part. I'm sorry, we'll pinch the tail against the lower digit on our left hand, wrap around the top, cross over, wrap around the bottom, and snug. We're going to take our hook, just like with the magic loop, go underneath that top loop, grab the bottom loop and slip, then flip our hands over, and grab both loops and take the loops off. But then rather than having to tension immediately, we can just hold both the tail end and our working yarn and pull to create a slip knot. Then we're going to need to tighten that slip knot down. So if you pull the tail and the working yarn apart from each other, it'll tighten your slip knot. And then we can just chain four stitches. So to do that, we're going to grab the working yarn and pull it through, which creates our first chain. Here's our second, third, and fourth. And then we're going to slip stitch back down that chain. So starting in the second chain from our hook, so not this one here, and then remember we don't count the one on our hook. We're going to slip stitch, and we did that to close off our hippo's head. So remember, just go through your next stitch, yarn over and draw through, and then just draw through again. We're going to do that another three times. And that wraps up the nostril, so we can fasten off by cutting a long tail to sew. And then I like to take both the slip knot tail and the tail that I just cut and pull them through that last loop. And then just pull them till they're all the way out. And then tighten both of them separately. Alright, so that is one nostril done. Let's make one more and then get it attached to our hippo's head. All right, so I have both of my nostrils done, so that means I am ready to attach them to my hippo's head, or m more specifically, his nose. So we're gonna attach them between rounds 25, I'm sorry, between rounds 24 and 25. So let's find those rounds first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So in between these two rounds here on the nose. And we're going to set them and then sort of push them so that they're closer together on the ends. That's going to create the nostril, that sort of shape. So let's start by threading the slip knot tail through the eye of our tapestry needle first. And then we're going to just send that straight into the snout here. Just weave it in. So I'll just give this a pull. 
And that gets it out of our way and also kind of helps hold the nostril where we want it to be on our hippo's snout. Then we can thread the longer tail that we cut. And we're going to just sew straight down and then up through the corner of the nostril. And then we'll go to the other side and tack down the other side of the nostril. And then we're going to want to sew this part of the nostril. So not this front side here. We want that to stay detached. But we want to sew this side down. So we'll put another stitch here along the back. And then one more so that it meets the edge. And then you can see the nostrils detach at the front, which makes it look kind of like a nostril. And we're ready to fasten off, so I'm going to sew so that the tail I have is coming out of the snout and not out of the nostril. Then I'll tie a surface knot by making that same loop that I did before, sewing down and then up through that loop that I tied till it forms a knot. And then I'm going to weave my tail in to the nostril or into the snout. Then we can cut both the slip knot tail we already wove in and the tail that we just wove in. And then we're going to repeat that process with the other nostril on the other side. All right, those are the nostrils attached to our hippo's head. So let's move on to the next part of our pattern. All right, so before I get started on the body, I wanted to make a mention of the fact that I might be working the body and possibly the arms in a different color yarn than what I need for my hippo. That's because the hippo is a part of a four animal project and they all have the exact same bodies because they're all wearing similar shaped clothes. So if you see me working with yellow or gray or blue yarn, don't be alarmed, you're watching the correct video. The bodies are all made the exact same way. All right, so let's go ahead and get started making the body. All right, so let's start the body and we'll be tying a magic loop. So maybe we'll cross our yarn over, we'll take our hook, grab that top loop, slip the bottom loop underneath. We're gonna pinch all of that together Tension our yarn and pull through. Then we'll untangle and you're ready to get started. And we'll begin by placing six single crochet stitches inside of our magic ring. So here's my first, and don't forget we always mark our first stitch even if it's in a magic ring. So I'm going to slip one of my stitch markers through. And let's make five more. And then we'll pull the tail to close up that round. And we're ready to move on to round two. Round two, we'll increase in each stitch. So remember, when we increase, we put two single crochet stitches in the same place. So here's my first, and I will, of course, mark it. And then in that same space, I'll place my second. And I will do that all the way around. All right, that wraps up round two. Round three, we're gonna continue increasing by placing one single crochet stitch in our first stitch of the round, marking that stitch. And then one increase in the next stitch. And then we're gonna repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, that wraps up that round. Okay, so for round four, we're going to continue increasing. This time we'll put one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So here's my first. And then we'll increase in the stitch after. And we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, that's the end of that round for me. Round five, we're going to continue increasing. 
This time we'll place one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. So here's the first. And after those first three stitches, we'll increase in the next. And just like before, we're going to repeat that same sequence all the way around. Alright, that wraps up round five. Let's move on to round six. So we're going to start by placing one single crochet stitch in each of the next four stitches. And then we'll increase in the next. And just like before, we'll repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, that's row six done. For round seven, we're going to continue increasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the next five stitches. And once we have those first five, we'll place an increase in the next. And just like all the rounds before, we're going to repeat that same sequence all the way around. Alright, that's round seven done. Alright, so for rounds eight through round fifteen, all we need to do is put one single crochet in each stitch. So I will see you whenever I get close to the end of round 15. Alright, I am wrapping up round 15. And I'm ready to move on to round 16. So for round 16, we're going to start decreasing. And we'll do that by placing one single crochet stitch in each of the next five stitches. So here's my first, so I'm going to mark it. Then when I have those first five stitches, we're going to place a decrease. So just a quick review on a decrease. We'll go through, yarn over and pull up a loop. And then go through our next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all the loops on our hook. Then we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, and that wraps up this round. Alright, so before we keep working, we need to divide the body in half because we're going to continue working one leg and then we'll attach to the other side and work the other. So I'm going to take this loop on my hook, I'm going to pull it up long, and then I'm going to count out 18 stitches here. So we'll start with the one on our, the one that our marker's in, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Then I'm going to take these two stitches, the one with the marker and the one that I have pinched in my fingers here, and I'm going to open my marker up and slip it underneath that 18th stitch that I've counted. And I'm going to close that because that splits my body in half. So we're going to continue. We didn't even have to take our yarn off. We're going to continue working around on this side to form one of the legs. And then when we finish this leg off, we'll come back and reattach and then work around this side to make the other leg. Great, right, so now that we have those divided, we can make our round 17 through 19. And to do that, we're going to single crochet around just one in each stitch. 
So we're going to go really carefully here on this first stitch because it's a little strange having to kind of swing around. But all we need to do to start working this round is we're going to kind of rotate our piece. And then we want to make sure we're going through, we want to go from the front to the back. We don't want to come in from the inside to the out. But we're going to go through the stitch on the other side of our marker. So here's our 18th stitch that we've got pinched. We're going to go from front to back through that 19th stitch. And that single crochet that we've just made is the first single crochet on this leg. So we'll take a new stitch marker and we're going to mark that first single crochet. And then we're going to just place one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. And we'll do that for rounds 17, 18, and 19. All right, I am wrapping up round 19. And you can see our leg is already starting to form on the side of the body. So let's go ahead and move on to round 20. And round 20, we will begin by placing one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches. Then we're gonna decrease the next two stitches. And we'll repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, that is round 20 done. For rounds 21 and 22, we just need to place one single crochet stitch all the way around. So I will see you at the end of round 22. All right, I am approaching the end of round 22. Here's my last stitch. And then before we move on, our pattern's telling us that we need to stuff the upper half and then a little bit of the leg that we're working on. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this loop that's on our hook long so our work doesn't come undone. And we'll grab some more of that super soft stuffing and we're gonna go ahead and put some inside of the upper half of the body. All right, and then we're also gonna add some inside of the leg here. All right, I have added my stuffing. So I can continue working on this leg. All right, so we're ready to work round 23. So we're gonna take our hook and we'll reinsert it into that loop we drew up long and then pull our working yarn. And for round 23, we're going to continue decreasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. So here's our first. And then we'll follow that with a decrease. And repeat that all the way around. Okay, we're ready to, to make round 24. So all we need to do for round 24 is put one single crochet stitch all the way around. Here's the last stitch of round 24. And we need to add a little more stuffing to the inside of this leg. So again, we'll pull up that loop a little long, grab just a little more fluff. And then we are ready to work round 25. So we'll reinsert our hook. Go ahead and take our stitch marker out. And for round 25, we're gonna put a decrease in every stitch all the way around. So we're gonna decrease. Don't forget to put our stitch marker back in to mark our first stitch. And we'll keep decreasing. And then we are ready to fasten off on our leg. So to do that, we'll go ahead and take our stitch marker out. Then we're gonna slip stitch to the next stitch, the one that our stitch marker was in. So again, to slip stitch, we'll go through our next stitch, yarn over and pull through both the work, 
and through the loop on our hook. And then we need to cut a little bit of a tail because we need to close up the bottom of this foot. So cut yourself about six inches or so. Then we'll pull through. So we'll take our hook and pull our yarn and then tighten that. And then I'm gonna put just a little more stuffing in the very tip of the foot here. And then I am ready to close up the foot. So to do that, I'm gonna take the yarn tail that I've cut and then using one of the tapestry needles from my kit, I'll thread that yarn through the eye. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna sew through each of the six stitches that are left on the bottom of my foot. So I'll just take my, yarn, my tapestry needle. I'm gonna go from front to back just like I would if I were crocheting underneath. And then I'll do the same thing on the stitch next to it. And I'll just keep working around. So here's my last stitch. And then I'm gonna very gently tug to close the bottom of the foot. Then when I've done that, we need to tie a knot and weave this tail in. So the way I like to tie my knots is I will loop my working yarn, what's threaded through my tapestry needle, over the surface of my work. And then I'll take my needle and slip it underneath and then up through that loop. And then when I pull, it ties a knot. So now that I have a knot tied, I'm gonna take my tail and I'm gonna weave it in to my piece. I'm gonna keep weaving by sewing long stitches on the inside of my work. I'm gonna do one more. Then when I have that woven in, I can take my scissors and by pulling that working yarn and cutting, it hides the tail inside of the body. All right, so let's move on by getting the next leg attached and working around. All right, so let me get you started on how to make the other leg. We're gonna follow the same pattern starting from round 17 all the way around to form our second leg. But it's a little tricky trying to figure out how to attach the yarn sometimes, especially if you're new to Migurumi. So let me walk you through how to get that done. So we're gonna take our hook and we're gonna go through the stitch. So I'm looking at my piece. Here's my marker here. I'm gonna go through the same stitch that my marker is in on this side. But I'm going to take my yarn and I'm going to oops, make a little loop here with it. Then I'll hook that on my hook and pull that loop through. And then I'm actually going to keep pulling until the tail of that loop comes through. And then we're going to tie this on so that it's attached to our work. So we'll just tie a regular knot like a square knot as if you were tying your shoe. Once that's tied, we can take this tail and kind of stuff it inside of the body because we were not gonna need it anymore. Then we're gonna take our hook and reinsert it in the same loop that we just tied to. And then we will Draw a loop up, All right, so now that we have our yarn tied on, we're going to go ahead and go through that same stitch that we just went through that we tied our yarn on, and then we're going to yarn over and draw the yarn through that loop. Then we're going to continue single crocheting around as normal, just like we would for round 17. So we'll go through our next stitch, 
yarn over, draw up a loop. So I worked all the way around and I am at the stitch marker here on the other side. So I'm going to go through that stitch that it's marking and create a single crochet. And then we're actually going to need to place a single crochet stitch inside of the stitch across the way that we fastened on to be our 18th stitch. So we kind of need to like stretch our hook over a little bit and then just like with the other leg we'll flip it around and go from front to back. So I'm going to go through and make that last single crochet stitch. It can be a little tricky to get with the other leg. If the other leg's in your way, you can kind of hold your hand behind. Now I'm going to take that stitch marker out now that we're all the way around. And we are good to continue working this leg like this leg on this side. So I have finished my second leg and I'm getting ready to fasten off, but before I do, um, I wanted to point out that there is a little bit of a gap between both of the legs, which is totally normal. So when we cut the tail for this leg, we're going to use it to kind of help sew this gap closed. So we'll go ahead and fasten off. I went ahead and slip stitched already. We're going to cut a little bit of a longer tail, so maybe 8 inches this time rather than 6. And then we'll take the crochet hook and pull to have our slip knot and then tighten that. So before we sew that gap closed, we do need to close off the bottom of the foot just like we did before. All right, so now that I have fastened off and I've tied my knot, we're going to weave our tail in and up to this part here on our body. So go ahead and just push your tapestry needle into the leg and we can slowly weave the tail up through the inside of the body and over to the gap between. Then before we start sewing we're going to want to tie another knot because if we pull this, we'll pull the tip of our foot in, which we don't want to do. So we'll do the same thing we did whenever we fastened off when we tied a knot. We'll tie another knot down here by looping our thread over, bringing our yarn up through that loop that we've made. And that'll prevent us from pulling the fabric of the tip of the foot down while we sew. Then to sew the gap between the legs closed, we're just going to run some long straight stitches between. So I'm going to go over and sew. And then when I pull that stitch, it'll bring the fabric together. Do the same thing on the next stitch. Sew through. And then give that a tug which closes the gap between the legs. Then we can fasten off for real this time by tying one more knot. And then weaving that tail end in. Then we can go ahead and take that extra tail and cut. And that is the body complete. All right, so next up in our pattern, we're going to make the ears, and we're going to start with another magic loop. And for round one, we're going to put six single crochet stitches inside of that magic loop. Don't forget to mark your first stitch. All right, we're going to do the magic part of our magic loop. Then we can move on to round two where we're going to increase in each stitch all the way around. 
Alright, so for round three, we'll start by putting one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of the round. Then we'll follow that with an increase. And then we'll repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, so for rounds four through six, all we need to do is put one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. So I will catch you back here whenever I'm wrapping up round six and we're ready to fasten off on the ear. Alright, so I just wrapped up round six, so I'm ready to fasten off. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out and I'm slip stitch to that next stitch. And then I need to cut a little bit of a tail because we do need this to sew with. So cut yourself eh, maybe 12, 14 inches and then pull that last slip stitch through and then tighten. Now that we have that stitch tightened, we can go ahead and sew the ear with the shape that we want it to have when it attaches to the hippo's head. So I like to make sure that my tail is over on the right hand side of my ear and then I'll fold it flat. And before I begin, I'm also going to want to thread that tail through the eye of my tapestry needle. So now that we have it folded flat, we're going to fold that in half. And this is the shape that we want for our hippo's ear. So we're going to sew through all four layers of fabric with our tapestry needle. We're just going to whip stitch through all four of them to help the ear stay with this shape. Make sure to grab all four layers. And once you've done that, then the ear is ready to get attached to the head. So we need one more of these for a total of two, and then we're going to attach them to the hippo's head. Alright, so I have both of my hippo's ears done, so I'm going to go ahead and attach them to the head before I make the arms. So I'll take that tail and thread it through a tapestry needle. And we're going to go ahead and attach the ears on. They're in line with the eyes and are around rounds eight and nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then in line with the eye. So right about here. And to attach them on, we're just going to grab a little fabric from the head, grab a little fabric from the ear, and just keep sewing until we've gone all the way around. All right, now that we've gone all the way around, we're gonna make sure that the tail that we've just used to sew is coming out of the hippo's head and not out of the ear. Then we're gonna tie another surface knot. So that's, again, looping our yarn over the surface of our work, sewing down into the sum of the fabric of the work, and then back up through that loop, and then just pulling until it tightens into a knot. And then we're going to weave that tail end in by sending it down into the hippo's head and then just out through a random place. I'm also going to send it back down and then back out to make sure it's really woven in. Then we can cut. And that is one ear attached to our hippo's head. We're going to repeat on the other side with the other ear. Alright, that is both of the hippo's ears attached to the head, so we're ready to move on in our pattern. We'll start off like we've done everything so far, with a magic loop. Once we have all six, you can pull that magic loop tail, and we are ready to move on to our next round. For round two, we're going to increase in each stitch all the way around. And before we move on to our next round, we're going to give that magic green tail a tug to make sure it's nice and tight. And we're ready for rounds three through nine. All right, so for rounds three through nine, all we need to do is place one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. 
So there's my first stitch. I will see you whenever I get a little closer to the end of round nine. All right, so I am wrapping up round nine here on the arm. And I'm ready to start round 10, where we're gonna begin decreasing. So we'll place one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. And then a decrease. And we'll repeat that all the way around. Next, we're gonna stuff the arm here. So we'll grab a little bit more of our fluff and go ahead and stuff. Then we can start round 11, where we'll put one single crochet stitch and follow that with a decrease. And we'll repeat that all the way around. I'm going to add a little more fluff here as well. And we're ready to fasten off. So we can go ahead and take our stitch marker out. And then we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch, the one that our stitch marker was just in. Then we'll cut ourselves a long tail for sewing, maybe 12 inches or so. And just like when we fastened off in the past, we're going to just pull that last stitch all the way out and then tighten that slip stitch. Then we're also going to thread our green tapestry needle with that tail. And just like with the legs on the body, we're going to sew through each of the remaining six stitches left. Once we've sewn through all six, we can pull. And I'm also going to tie a surface knot. So I'll loop my thread over the top of my work, and then sew a little inside of the piece, and then up through that loop. And that completes one of the arms. We need to make one more, and then we are ready to move on to assembly. All right, so I have completed both of my arms, so we are ready to start assembly. And we're going to begin with the hippo's head and body. So we need to start off by getting ourselves a little bit of purple yarn. Because the snout is worked towards the front, we don't have anything to use to attach our hippo's head and body. So we're going to have to attach some purple yarn to the underside of the hippo's head doesn't really necessarily matter as long as it's sort of centered in the top part of the head so that that where we tie the knot will hide when we attach the body. So we're going to go ahead and thread our tapestry needle and I'm going to just send it through one of these stitches here and then I'll tie a square knot so just like you would tie a shoe And then I'm going to cut this knot off, but short, so it stays out of my way while I'm working. And then we are ready to attach the hippo's head to the hippo's body. So the head attaches towards the top upper part, and it's at a little bit of an angle whenever we do this. So the snout kind of snugs up to our body. You can kind of see here the snout's kind of pressed up against it. We're going to just take our thread that we just tied to our hippo's head and then of course making sure that the snout is in line with the front of the body so where the legs are. We're just going to whip stitch a little fabric from the head of the hippo and a little fabric from the body of the hippo and we'll keep working until we are all the way around. Right, so really quick, when we get to the snout, we don't actually want to attach the snout to the body. We're just going to take this part here where the head is, so not the nose. 
So if you want, you can kind of turn it so that the body is facing up so you can just get at the stitches underneath the snout. And we're gonna just keep whip stitching the head to the body. Now that I'm all the way around, we can go ahead and tie another surface knot. So we'll loop the thread over the surface of the work, so down and up through that loop. Pull until it's a knot, and then we can weave that tail end in and cut it close. Alright, next up, let's attach the arms. So with the tails left over from each arm, So with the tails left over from each arm, we're going to go ahead and thread our tapestry needle. And then we're going to attach them to the body about one round down from where the head attaches. And to attach them, we're going to just whip stitch through both layers of the, yarn, of the, of the arm and into the fabric of the body. So I'm going to grab a little fabric from the body and then go through both of the layers of the top of the arm. I'm just going to sew all the way across the top of the arm, really pushing the arm down, kind of smushing it up against the body here. Then I'm also going to sew the front of the arm down just a little bit. So maybe two, three rows down, I'm going to whip stitch that to the body. And then I'm going to send that yarn underneath the arm inside of the body and up on the other side of the back of the arm and do the same thing on this side. So just kind of whip stitch it down just to keep the arms from sticking straight out. Alright, once you've got the arm attached we can go ahead and tie another surface knot. And weave the tail in. And then we need to repeat that on the other side with the other arm. Alright, so the arms are attached to my hippo, which means it's time for my favorite part to accessorize. All right, and just like that, our hippo is done and fully accessorized.